Hello and welcome to the second service of Balfron Kirk in quarantine. Our church building is still empty and we may still be confined to our homes, but it's not stopping us from meeting together online and still worshipping our God. As Jesus says, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. And this morning, for a short while, we're going to put aside all the distractions, ignore the dirty dishes in the sink, not think about the next shopping order, or what's for lunch, or even watch the news. We will simply, together, worship, praise, and listen to God's word, and spend time together as a congregation, as we do every Sunday morning. A worldwide pandemic won't stop us. Today's service is celebrating spring and the beauty of new life, which is bursting out all around us. From a land that looked empty and dead, now new shoots are appearing, the trees are in bud, there were daffodils, and now bluebells are springing up everywhere. The tiny seeds that many of us have planted for vegetables are beginning to sprout. And as a church, we have pots of sunflower seeds for anyone who wants to come and get one to take away and plant and put somewhere and watch the wonder as it grows and becomes a beautiful sunflower. There are information on the uh, Facebook page about where to come and collect them. It's to remind us that God's love, once planted in our hearts, will grow and grow and become something beautiful, something that can transform us. Our lives can blossom too and we can bear fruit, the fruit of God's gifts and his love. But it also reminds us that kind words, thoughtful actions and love that we can show those around us, even limited as we are in the current situation, that we too can sow a seed of Jesus' love in others, a seed that can take root in the souls of those we encounter in our daily lives. So sit back and relax for the next 15 minutes and enjoy our service. Let us pray. We gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scattered among us this morning fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. The reading today is Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, and then 18 to 23, the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. And the disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to people in parables? And now verses 18 to 23. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. What was sown on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. What was sown among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But what was sown on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty 
or 30 times what was sown. God bless to us this reading. How great thou art. Since lockdown began, many of us have been trying to do things we've been wanting to do for a long time. While we have also had time to think of ways of brightening our lives, some perhaps thinking of reorganising wardrobes and cupboards, or even redecorating our homes. Others have been led to think of their gardens, tubs on the balcony, window boxes inside or out, and planting seeds. We hope by planting these seeds, they will grow to give us pleasure when we see the beautiful colours, or provide us with delicious fruit and vegetables. I remember a visiting minister at our church saying to us that we are all flowers growing which will produce seeds. What kind of seeds are we going to produce and spread? Are they going to be seeds of despair, anger or frustration? Or are they going to be seeds of love, patience, kindness, compassion and peace? Like the seeds we plant in our garden, 
They need nurturing to help them grow. Where will this come from for us? God is our provider. He guides us where to sow the seeds and then helps them to grow and nurture to maturity. As the parable of the sower, some of the seeds were eaten by birds, others had little soil and the sun killed them. Others were choked by weeds, but some fell on good fertile soil and produced a bountiful crop. This will be true of seeds we sow. Many will be rejected. Others will be choked out by other interests. However, many will continue to grow and spread God's word throughout our land. We plough the fields and scatter. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you give us everything we need, that you offer us rest and refreshment through your word, that you keep us on the straight and narrow when we are prone to stray. We thank you that those times when we are afraid, we can trust that you watch out for us. For there are many who hunger, many who are left out in the cold, while others reap the benefits of a society based on greed. We think of those who are homeless or displaced, those who are exploited, those who are poor. There are many who cannot enjoy the beauty and mystery of creation. We think of prisoners of conscience, of those living in war-ravaged lands, of those confined through illness. There are many who yearn for rest in lives which are restless and hard. In particular at this time, we think of those who work long hours in our frontline services for little reward. 
There are many who struggle to find the right path because life has taken them a different, difficult route. We think of those with addiction problems, those who turn to crime through desperation, of children whose home life is chaotic, particularly at this time. There are many who are fearful for themselves and for others. We think of those in broken relationships, those who live with sickness, those who are afraid of the future and of being themselves. There are many who have lost hope that light will ever penetrate their darkness. We think of those who live with loneliness, grief, bereavement and rejection. There are many who we walk alongside in their pain and suffering, their joy and hope. We think of them now in a time of silence. Lord God, look after all your people on their different journeys, with their different joys and struggles. Remind them that all are honoured guests at your table, and that all may find a home in you. Lavish them with your goodness and love, so that they might know that in you they have everything they need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. time together is drawing to a close but I'd like to encourage you to count your blessings this week. I was surprised to discover that the expression to count your blessings comes from the Jewish faith and goes back to the time of David when there was a plague killing 100 people every day. The rabbis at the time instituted a practice of reciting 100 blessings per day and the plague stopped. Now I'm not suggesting that if we count our blessings the coronavirus deaths will stop, but just that it's important to not be overwhelmed by the negatives and to take time to be thankful for the good things in our lives, our friends and our families and the communities that we live in. For many of us, our faith planted as a seed in good soil. This week, if you have a garden or one of our sunflower seedlings to nurture, stop a while as you tend and care for it and listen to the sounds of nature around you and count them as a blessing. Thank you for taking part in our service today. Balfron Church members are always available to help if you, if you need any help. Just ask about the community. Somebody always knows somebody that's a member of the church. Or we have our Facebook page and you can always contact somebody through there. Thank you so much. God bless. <laughs>